everybody, my name is Daniel Oliver and I'm with Nothing More and I'm going to show you all my bass gear today. This is a white thing we've deemed her, it's a Music Man Bongo, a white with a black pit guard, double humbucker. She's great, Music Man gave it to me for the uh, stories we tell ourselves after we released it. This thing was uh, designed by the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, so it's actually not a real bass, it's just so the astronauts can go in and practice bass like they would practice bass in space. It's that great. So, um, rumor has it these bases were actually designed by BMW, which I don't fully understand, but uh, all I know is that it is a very high horsepower base, very diverse in tone. Uh, it's got an 18 volt system. Um, when it comes to the pickup selection on this guy, pretty much, well actually, I do not use the front pickup. I hate it. I don't know why. I don't know why they put it on there. Um, I'm, I'm purely a bridge pickup man. Um, I start, I run the treble on zero for the most part. Um, some of the songs where I do play with the pick, I will uh, boost it a little bit more as I get sweaty and the strings start to rust on stage. Sometimes I need to turn the treble up, but for the most part this is a very gangly bass, so I'm able to keep it pretty low. Uh, this bottom knob is the low end. Um, I usually keep it about 80%, <clears throat> um, and it pretty much stays there. Uh, this is your high mids, I keep that at zero as well, not boosted or cut. Low mids I keep uh, about 20%. From zero I cut it about 80%. So, yeah. So that's this guy. Uh, I love him. He's light, he looks good, he's sexy. He belongs in space. So yeah, the strings I run on this, they're just the medium gauge uh, Ernie Ball Slinky. Nothing special about that. Uh, because I do sweat so much on stage, only because I get into it so much, I do change strings every single day. Um, I run this guy in drop Sam A. Sam changes strings every day. Oh yeah, sorry, Sam. sorry. <clears throat> I do not change strings every day. Sometimes twice a day. <clears throat> He's hardcore. He's hardcore. When I did it, I used to boil him like a homeless man, but now we have a uh, great crew and uh, a music man hooks us up with strings and instruments, so we're, we're out of the hobo days, thank God. Um, but anyway, this guy runs in drop A. Uh, for Jenny, I do tune the A to uh, B flat, just to give it the low, I can hit that low open. Um, and then for ballast, I do tune the C up to D. And I don't remember why I do that, it's just how I wrote the song in that, and it's what the muscle memory said. But, for the most part, yeah, this bass stays in that tuning, and um, she likes it, so. So this guy's kind of my pride and joy, uh, Music Man. It is the Music Man bongo, like the other one. Uh, this is the single humbucker model, um, which, for some reason, this bass just sounds a lot better than the other one. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's uh, been dropped a million times. Uh, or because, I don't know if you've seen our, our uh, big like four-man bass solo thing, but I literally designed that whole steel contraption around this bass. Um, and so in the, in the designing and testing, it took quite a few spills. It also got scratched up a lot by the steel. Um, so I think all, all that just kind of changed its DNA over time and made it angry because this bass does not sound at all like the other bass. Um, and also this bass has different tuning pegs. It makes the headstock way heavier. I literally feel like I'm jogging with sandbags when I'm playing this guy. If I take my hands off it, it will spin neck to the ground. I don't know why. Um, it's just a, <laughs> it's just kind of this gnarly alien thing. And I sent it into Music Man a number of years ago. I do all my own maintenance, but th this was just, I was out of time and I'm like, can you guys refurbish this thing for me? Like the G string was no longer over the fretboard. I didn't know how that happened either. It just Gremlins got into the trailer and really beat the shit out of it. Um, and yeah, when they came back, they gave it a new name, and all the guys in the shop called it War Beast. So this guy is now War Beast. But I love the back of the neck. It, it was, they went ahead and took the rest of the finish off, but it was so worn just from years of use that there was no paint left. Um, so this is truly a worn machine. If you can see here, there's a little bit of blue. That's because I had to make my own gasket to keep water and sweat out of there because I was rusting through, uh, you know, the electronics. It was, you know, summer touring. It's hardcore. Yeah, so this guy's running the exact same tuning as White Fang. It's a drop A, which is also a drop C, you know, if you're just playing guitar. Um, it's running same strings as the other one, just the Music Man medium gauge strings. Um, 
And for the last couple of tours, this guy's only come out if we do an alternate tuning. There are a couple songs that we did, say, a full half step lower than the record. Um, then we would tune this down a half step and it would come out. Or if you caught us on a tour where we were still doing the, the big bass solo, uh, this pretty much just got used for that. And then for everything else, I was using the white bass. But uh, when you listen to our records, this is the bass that you hear. Um, I have not recorded yet with the white bass. I've yet to see what it'll do in the studio, but all of uh, the self-titled record, The Few Not Fleeting, and the stories we tell ourselves are all done with War Beast. And I actually got this bass from a the, Warp, the Music Man Warp Tour Battle of the Bands. So we, we uh, participated back in like 05, you know, before way long ago, before Johnny was even singing. Uh, we won, we were one of four national winners, and they gave us a bunch of Music Man instruments and also like a $10,000 Guitar Center credit. And honestly, I picked this bass out to sell so we could fund a record. But I fell in love with it so much that the guys let me keep it and it's now my forever bass. So thank you, Music Man. I love you guys. So this is my pedal board setup. Um, like I said, we're running the Axis FX XL2. Um, this is my MFC 101 pedal that accesses all the goodness in that multi-effects processor. Uh, this is also the expression pedal that comes with the axe um, that I use for waz and different expression stuff. Over here, this is my SGI backup. Basically what that does is it takes a quarter inch cable, converts it to an XLR so it can make long runs through our snake from the downstage all the way to our rack. Say if we're at a festival and I'm 100 feet from the side of the stage, I won't have any signal loss. Uh, it's, you know, the wirelesses are pretty stout, they don't go out too much, but every now and again you have to plug into that guy and I'm thankful that it's there. Um, and this is just my backup that goes into the SGI in the event that my wireless does go out or something's wrong. Um, I just flip this AB switch to that, that makes the quarter inch hot and plug in and hopefully that fixes my problem. So, hello everybody, we're uh, back at the rack where all of my signal gets processed and uh, the first step back here so it comes in through a Shure wireless unit, uh, the ULXD4, it says it right there. Um, I highly recommend it. it, it has zero cutouts. We've banged the living hell out of them uh, and they've been solid. You know, we had a lot of problem with line six stuff before, just it, it was solid until you jump too high, which was kind of funny, but uh, they, they make a great product, but we highly recommend the Shure stuff. Um, from there we go down into my Axe FX 2 XL, which is identical to Mark's Axe FX 2 XL, except that mine's just magically better because it's mine. Um, <laughs> no, not really, but it was funny. I was real resilient to going to the full digital effects thing. You know, I'm, I'm more of an analog guy. I didn't even like doing effects at first when I joined this band, but Mark really kind of took me to the dark side. Uh, you know, I like smoking cigarettes and riding motorcycles with carburetors, so there's something about this just really scared me. But I am so happy that I did, because it, despite the learning curve when you get into it, um, it is an insanely powerful tool. Um, it costs about the same as if you were to go out and buy a bunch of pedals. You know, it's really not that much more expensive. I know it can seem like a big buy-in at the front end, but um, once you kind of just take the time to get to know it, you can dial in all sorts of tones. Um, so what I, what I typically run in any, on all of my tones pretty much, there's basically two lines. Like a lot of, a lot of tones, a lot, like if you take the full drive pedal by MOSFET, or uh, I forget who makes it actually, it's, it's the MOSFET full drive bass, bass drive, you can blend in the distortion with the clean bass line, right? So what I do with the Axe FX is I can do that with up to four different uh, lines of signal, if you will. For the most part, I run two. So one of them will end up being insanely distorted. Using, for the amp modeler, I use the uh, basically the SVT cab, or SVT uh, tube head that they have in there. And then for the overdrive, I almost always go to the full drive. And then I actually do that same exact thing on my second input line, but I make that second one just a little bit cleaner. So, and then you can mix between the two depending how dirty you want it, blah, 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 and throw all sorts of effects in there. Um, I mean, it's so powerful. There, there are times we're playing and people don't know if the guitar is making the noise or the bass. You know, and all that happens in an instant. And it can happen, some songs have, you know, up to 12 different scene changes. Um, it's just, you can take it as far as you want. You know, like I, I don't, I, I'm not the most technical guy, technical guy when it comes to recording or 
digital gear, but when you really get into it, it's there for you. And I fucking love that about it. Now here, here's a good example. This is, uh, this is probably my most simple preset. It's for Salem. Uh, and I guess I made it August 7th of some year. Um, <clears throat> yeah, basically here I just have a compressor going into the amp. This is the SVT uh, little simulator. And then on the second line, using my full drive, you know, simulator into another SVT. And then you just mix between the two. So this is a cleaner, cleaner tone. So line two is down, which is my dirty. And take this for instance. Here, here's the most complicated tone I have though, and it's for the bass solo if you've ever seen it. There's a lot happening in there. And to get all the, there's probably like nine different serious tone changes throughout that bass solo. And they all happen within here. Um, and what's, you know, what's cool, and it handles it, no problem. There's no latency. It's never crashed on us really. And yeah, you just, you know, flick down these and you'll see blocks turn on and off and, you know, you can assign one expression pedal like that wah pedal you saw. It can, it can open up a delay, a wah, another envelope filter. It can swell in a tremolo if you want, all at the same time. And that's really kind of the cool thing is that all the pedals can talk to each other through one uh, interface parameter like a button or a wah pedal and that's just so cool so many times i have the vault like the end the very beginning of the great divorce i push one button and it has a time uh i forget what we call it but a time buffered i hit one button and the, this tremolo volume sweeps in at this at this certain time uh buffering that i set in and it's really cool so i hit it and right when i hit the two the chord together it's clean and then in the next second it boosts 5 db and has this massive distorted tremolo on it so it takes a little time to get into like i said but once it's there it's incredible a big thank you to music man obviously uh for all the basses ernie ball gives me the strings music man also gives me my picks when i decide to use them because i'm a bass player uh let's say use orion straps um if you're looking for cool clothes cult of individuality we all wear them they probably have the most comfortable jeans i've ever worn uh big thanks to those guys I sing through an Audio Technica mic. It sounds freaking awesome every night. Axe specs all the way. We'll, we're believers. We'll never switch. Thank you guys for watching. This is how I do my business every night on tour. Uh, thank you to Gear Masters for showing us, uh, showing my world to you. So yeah, hopefully we'll see you down the road.